particularly appreciated that um, what was initially seemed to be a one-sided uh, side of the story did turn out to be quite a balanced uh, exploration of the ideas around waste incineration. Uh, this is actually the second forum that we've had in a few days because we had a forum recently uh, in Ray Avenue on uh, waste energy and um, Lee Bell spoke and we saw many people here might have seen the film Trashed. So it was a, uh, it's certainly topical and we know that our mayor's been to Japan and learned things and we, we're anxious to hear what he's learned from Japan. But I, I think from my perspective, and the more that I've learned about it, and I've made a submission on the uh, Quinana proposal, uh, and I, I do have a submission on the Rockingham one, which, which I'll make available to the public, but I didn't get into the EPA. So I, can, I have been passionate about waste for many years, and I could give much more than eight minutes on, on waste management, but I won't. I will limit it to maybe a, a comment and then ask for your response to that. And basically, it's, it's hinged around um, what Peter said about uh, incineration being part of the integrated solution. Now, where I'm at in my thinking, and I don't know, many of you might be in the same place, I just see that we are uh, creating a monster. I think that by incinerating, by creating this market for waste that is then incinerated, uh, we are foregoing other opportunities for what we can do with waste. And it is such a, and, and the reason why I call it a monster is because it's, it has a great big appetite for waste. And so anything that we might do uh, otherwise, like diverting waste away from incineration, uh, will be harder because there'll just be less of it, you know. So we're actually stifling the market that I thought Adam <coughs> started to explain about that innovation and entrepreneurialism with waste that we would like to see, you know, as a more creative solution to this. So I was concerned about the um, couching of this incineration as a, as a part of the solution because I see it as taking us down a path and ruining the opportunity for all the other potential paths that we, that SMRC in, in for example, has worked really hard to uh, capitalize on. And the concerns that I still have about incineration are the emissions. I want to know what's going up that stack and what's coming out in the air. Because having been you know, a, a member for South Metropolitan Region and witnessed closely what's happened with Coburn Cement and the stack and the difficulty of, of controlling what goes up uh, something that's being burned, you know, what, can, what goes out into the atmosphere once you burn something. Uh, it is quite a complex and terrifying problem for children, you know, in, in my region. And so I am deeply concerned about the emissions when we burn waste, and particularly when we don't separate it. So the idea of separation, love it. I still haven't heard the details on how Quinana is going to separate, and I don't, sorry, don't know the details of Rockingham. So if you want to address separation of waste, that would be helpful. Um, and then market, I've discussed, I don't want to create a market for something that we don't want to give future generations. And then thirdly, uh, uh, the opportunity cost, you know, of the other things that we might be able to do with our waste. So those are some of the uh, concerns I know I've heard from my constituents and the concerns that I still have about going down the road of incineration. Thank you, Lynn. Peter, maybe you mentioned it. No, you know, <laughs> you go first, and we'll uh, let others ask. Yeah, more than happy to, because um, a lot of what you're talking about, then, of course, is a policy-setting framework. Where, where does the state want to go into it? Take tackling each one at a time. Um, do we just want to feed the monster? Do we want to create more of these and feed the monster? Um, I've been around the world and, and certainly looked at what other communities are doing, and once they've got them in place, they're less worried about that, and they've got their other programs in place. However, as I was indicating beforehand, if you look at the Germany example, Germany looked at their waste production in um, the 1980s, and it was going up like this. So their response to it was to extrapolate that out to there and not think about anything else. And they built something like 56 waste to energy plants in 10 years. They just put them all in. And then they discovered that the waste started coming off. 
And so now they've got plants which have got over capacity because they've built so many. Mm -hmm. my, my message in here in Western Australia is do not do that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying we have to bring, get policies into place to get Adams type stuff happening. We need to look at the best practice in what we're doing in composting so that we actually finish up with a product that is usable. Get all that stuff happening, but don't build the waste energy plants up so that you take this landfill out straight away. Build them up over time, get the policy settings right, which is your job. And then as we come down, we'll be 10 to 15 years out, the plant will, plants will be paid off and you can shut them down if you can get to zero right. in that time frame. So that's, that's where I'm at with it, is I'm agreeing with you that we, we don't want to chunk up the waste to energy plants and then sit back and say, what a great job we've done because we haven't. And then create more waste to feed but, them. Yeah, we yeah. feed the monster. Or we go, you know, look, look what's happening in New South Wales at the moment. Mm -hmm. They have five of the waste, the uh, aerobic digesters and anaerobic digesters. They've been, had to shut most of them down. They lifted their landfill levies up to a point where landfill is now $350 a tonne. What does Queensland do? Queensland took the landfill levy off. And so New South Wales is now transporting their waste up to Queensland to put it into landfills in Queensland. Mm. How dumb is that? So, so that one point, anybody else want to come on? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah okay, uh, uh, probably a few points to make there, I suppose. Um, my view um, is that strategy should become before the infrastructure. So that a strategic waste infrastructure plan should be in place and then you plot in the technology. Mm. as opposed to what I see, uh, and maybe this is my perception, so it's my perception, um, is that we've got um, fairly large potential for exactly what you said, is that unsorted waste, the three bin system that was put up, both Peter and I put it up, mm -hmm. um, well, there's very little three bin system operating in Perth at all, so mm. the residual waste, hence my, my slide about what is residual waste. At the moment, residual waste to feed a waste to energy plant Mm. is the entirety of your green bin that sits at your curbside. Mm. Yeah. So I would like somebody to explain to me, I only ask it as a question, so if that's the feedstock and 60% um, of it is recyclable in some other form and that's what you want to do in five years time, well then you're going to reduce the feedstock that's coming to your plant, so I don't know how you accommodate that fluctuation. Because of what I was just saying, you don't build up enough plants to be able to take the whole amount and the technology is flexible. So therefore right. you need the strategy that Correct. models that before you just go and say let's build well, one. Well yeah. we have to be careful with the strategy question itself because we could strategise for the next 10 years and we could still be putting waste in the landfill. Sorry, we I was going to have a debate, I thought I was going to answer your <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you, you turned to me and asked me the question, so I'm responding to your question. But that's a good question. Sorry, yeah, that, that, that's very, I'm happy to discuss yeah. it because I don't think there is a simple answer and I think it needs discussion. Correct. I think it needs airing and people need to be comfortable with all the outcomes, whatever they might and be, because it's the collective that determines it, not... And let's try to get everyone answer every question. Anyone else really want to jump in? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The last point I'd like to make on residuals is that it follows on from what you're saying is that um, if we really look at what is the residual fraction in our waste uh, at the moment, if we were to recycle to the maximum possible extent, we'd probably be looking at something like maybe 5, maybe 10% of the entire waste stream. And that's what we really need to be targeting in a different way, is the, as they do in Nova Scotia, where they actually take those residuals, the residuals, the, the really nasty stuff that you can't do a lot with. They actually compost that, not to put on agricultural land, not to put in gardens or anywhere else. They, they compost it to landfill. And the reason why is because all the bioreacting agents within, the, within that residual material is already reacted out during the composting phase. So when it does go to a landfill, uh, it has absolutely minimal leachate, minimal odour, minimal methane gas release. You don't attract birds and vermin and so on. And that's what they've been doing in Nova Scotia for a while, where they've got their um, diversion rates up around the 70% mark moment uh, and they have a special facility that researches those residuals and then talks back to the industry and says hey if you can't design this stuff so that we can't recycle or reuse or compost it um, then it can't be on the market here so there, there's an element of, of reflexivity about it and actually talking back to industry about the products it's putting on the market mm -hmm. so that's again a sort of direction we should be looking at for truly residual waste. So with that, can I, can I go to some more? Because I think it's actually a really interesting question for state government. I mean where's it seems that there's I mean, I, I must say, I didn't buy the waste authority to be here, which is the state government body. Um, they can't waste the reason authority. Someone's going to be a bit more less blunt than that. There currently <laughs> isn't anyone in the waste authority, which I think is part of the, the board that yeah. we're currently operating. Yeah, which is perhaps where I'll, I'll kick off. Um, thanks very much. 
when you become a new member of parliament, people would, might be aware I was elected 18 months ago, it's all a learning curve in terms of all these different policy areas. And I'd be the first to admit that in this area I'm, I'm learning about the issue. Uh, but there are clearly some policy issues uh, which uh, need to be acted on. And if we look at the state government at the moment, they just increase the landfill levy hugely, about 400%, which on the face of it, first glance, you'd say, well, that's a positive thing. We need to put a price on um, you know, what's going into landfill. But in fact, it's put huge pressure on, on the building industry who are not adjusted. Um, but worse, uh, only 25% of that is going into uh, you know, waste management programs and recycling programs. So really it was just a cash grab on, the, on their part. Uh, I'm, I'm interested, I've, I've um, publicly acknowledged the City of Fremantle's position on the recycling um, of, uh, on the no plastic bags. I think that's been a good thing and I voted that way and our party, Labor, voted that way in the State Parliament. I was on a parliamentary committee that considered that issue and the committee was split, so uh, we didn't make a recommendation to Parliament and the, in Parliament the Liberals and Nationals voted against uh, reducing um, the city's um, policy to reduce the amount of plastic bags. Uh, and um, so now they've recommitted that, recommitted that, uh, that policy issue, so that's good. I'm also interested in container deposit schemes. I just think that takes political direction and um, drive, and so I'm committed to that, and uh, Labor is as well. On the question of, uh, of uh, waste energy plants, um, my initial reaction uh, is one of concern, although, it, as I said, I've, it's a learning curve in terms of what, um, what's occurred in other places uh, around the world. It seems to me, though, that we should adopt a best practice approach. But somehow, we have to, um, as was said, we have to look at what, the, um, what our strategy is overall. But we do have to balance that, and I guess, um, Sorry, that Adam from well, I think your point was, you know, the policy is one thing, but the reality of industry um, is that they don't just sit back and wait and then kind of step up to the plate. That's all a moving feast. So we do have to respond to where business and, and, um, and industry is, is, uh, is taking place. And that's a very live debate, as we can see, is occurring, um, you know, in these two plants. Um, we've got... Um, Hazelmere going on at the moment, um, a, a plant um, that's been approved and a lot of people are concerned about the emissions that are taking place there. So uh, yeah, it is, a, it is an interesting one. I'm, I've got some concerns about where the state government is at uh, in their commitment to trying to reduce landfill, increase recycling, do that in an intelligent best practice way and that's the challenge that we've got before mm -hmm. us. Thanks, Good point. Now I